Hold fast to the profession of your faith. And not a building in San Antonio is going to hold what the Lord is about to do. Satan wants to make sure you never get this word. Satan is scared of this word. He has problems with this word. But I got a question to ask you. Are you ready for the word? Are you ready or not? Here it comes. In Jesus' name, praise God. How y'all doing today? So am I, same Lord, same faith, same as those. But my, I mean it though. Praise Amen. God. I said, I said, I said, how are y'all doing today? Amen. All right, that's a little bit more like it. Praise God. Amen. If you got a Bible with you, I invite you to turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Come on over there with me as I share with you a word that's going to help you stay free during the middle of these times that we're going to be living in, that we're living in right now, too. The days that are coming, praise God, so we could be living the life that God wants us to do, all while things are going on around me and you. We're going to continue in the teaching that we started just a little while back. It's called Last Day's Atmosphere. Last Day's Atmosphere. We're talking about the prevalent mindset and the attitude of the people until Jesus comes. Because there's going to be a mindset that's going to be throughout the land. Praise God, that's going to be carried by many women and men. That's going to be thinking things and doing things totally outside of what we would normally do. Praise God. And that's why it's going to be an atmospheric change, all right. Praise God. But it's not going to be the one that they're talking about on the news. Talking about climate change on the news. Yeah, it's a climate change, all right, praise God. But it's not talking about what they're talking about. We're talking about the prevailing attitudes, standards, and environmental conditions of a group, period, or place. The prevailing attitudes, standards, or environmental conditions of a group, a period, or a place. Well, this place has changed. I don't know if you noticed that America has changed, praise God. And it's changing rapidly right before our very eyes, praise God. The moral character of this place is disappearing rapidly. Praise God. What's right and wrong is like it's not even considered right and wrong no more. They are literally calling wrong, right, and right, wrong, and attacking you for calling right, right, and wrong, wrong. Yes. And so it's changing. And so God wants us to know about, yes, there's a change that's real, but at the same time, he wants you to know how to handle it because he's going to give you a word that's real, that's going to be keeping you and, and bringing you through into the life that God has in store for you. That despite all the atmospheric changes, all the different mindsets and attitudes and dispositions that are changing this, in this day and time too, God does not change. God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. His word is still the same. And just like God said in his word, he's going to keep you, he's going to keep you through in these times too. I don't care what happens, I don't care what comes our way, God say everything for you is going to be okay as long as you stick with the word that I'm giving you. So we're going to learn a little bit more about that today. The last day's atmosphere, the the prevalent mindsets and attitudes of the people until Jesus comes. So until he part the sky and get you and I, God said, I want you to keep this in mind and just understand what I said and continue to do what I say. Everything's going to be okay. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 3 is the foundational text. We're going to read that, do a brief review. Then we're going to move forward into the day stuff, which I believe is going to bless you in Jesus' name. It done blessed me already. <laughs> you know, I like to cook in the kitchen, praise God. They already come out grinning with chicken in their teeth and stuff like that too. Well, I ain't got no chicken in my teeth, but I got the word in my mouth. Praise God. And it's going to, I know it's good, and it's going to bless you. Praise God. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let's begin reading in verse 1. It reads, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, Despise of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. God says from such, turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And then we know he goes on and gives us an example of what happened in the past with Jonas and Jambres, praise God, and how they were operating foolish, but their foolishness didn't last. And how if we're going to live this thing godly like he told us to do, then there's going to be constant stuff coming at me and you. But he told us, don't worry about that. You just stick with what I've already told you. If you stay with the word and remember what you heard and live your life according to that too, remember that it's been breathed by me. I said it to you. And it's profitable to be able to help you through so that you can be that man that's perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, doing everything that God wants you to do because my word works. God wants us to know that during these times that we're going through, that yes, there may be changes in the atmosphere. There's definitely going to be changes in the atmosphere. He, he's already told us it's going to happen. But at the same time, they don't have to have an effect on me and you. They don't have to be able to bring us down or cause us to miss out on what God has in store for me and you. 
No, you're still going to live the blessed life. You're still going to live the glorious life that God has in store for you. You'll still be victorious in everything that you do. And you'll also be able to accomplish the mission that you was left here to do. And that's get folk rapture ready. Praise God so that they can be able to come to heaven with me and you. Praise God and not be left in hell like nobody wants them to. Praise God. So he told us to stick with the word. Somebody say stick with the word. Stick with the word. That's what he wants us to do is just stick with the word and let the word do what the word do. Praise God because the word is going to give us the clarity and understanding of how we should live our lives, what God says is right and what's wrong, and be able to make sure that we last all day and all night long without any problems per se because with, uh, with, 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 we know what God has to say. Now we found out that Jesus wasn't negatively affected in the atmosphere that he was living in. And then he's, God has equipped us with everything necessary so that we can be able to make it through too, victorious in all that we do. In fact, so much so that God equips us to be able to live successfully during these last days and live it in boldness too, praise God. But we're going to be the righteous, so we're the, we're the righteous, so we're bold as a lion. Arr, arr, praise God. Lion is no he the king of the beast. He know he ain't got nothing to worry about. He know he can defeat any animal that comes up in there, praise God. And you need to know this, that you're going to win in everything that you do. You just keep moving forward knowing that God got you. Look at your neighbor and say, God got you, baby. God got you. Praise God. God got you, so you ain't got nothing to worry about. Come on. thousand will fall by your right hand. Ten thousand by your left. But it ain't going to come by you. Praise God. In fact, all you're going to get a chance to be able to do is show them that they're wrong. That's what you're going to do. Praise God. Because God wants you to be strong. So he's going to have you operating in boldness, which you don't hesitate or be fearful in the face of actual or possible danger. You won't hesitate or you won't be fearful. What we scared of? God did not give us the spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Praise God. So we can keep that sound mind and, and make the right decisions every time, especially when the decision is whether we're going to stick with the word of God and veer from the word of God like others do. We ain't going out like that. We're going to do what God's word said do. We found out our boldness is fueled by our trust that God is going to be there for us. Because we know that God's going to be there for us, we're going to be bold. Because with God before us, who can be against us? With God by our side, what do we care about what somebody else say to say or what they do? Our boldness becomes more pronounced, though, when we know and trust that God's word is always right. And so since God's always right, we never wrong do it standing with what's right. I said we're never wrong standing with what's right. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, he's really telling the truth right now. Amen. 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 We, we, we're never wrong standing with what's right. Praise Amen. God. Amen. You're going to think you're wrong because everybody else is doing wrong. But see, you don't, this ain't the time to be trying to find out whether you can fit in with everybody else. You stick with God. Amen. Let the words of your mouth and the meditations of your heart be acceptable in his sight. My strength and my redeemer. He's the one that's going to be your strength. He's the one that redeemed you. And he's the one that's going to bring you through. As long as you stick with the word that he gave you. Praise God. That's one of the reasons why we found out during these times, we want to meditate this word that works. Praise God. Since God's word is not void of power, but accomplishes everything it's sent to do. Part of what it's sent to do is be able to keep me in you and keep our mind right too. We found out God's strength is in his word. So when we meditate it, it's like releasing what's in that word to be able to come get into our system and then strengthen us too. Praise God. So we can become strong too. Strong in the Lord and in his power and the might. Ready to fight the good fight. Praise God. Out of faith and do what we do. I'm talking about in the spirit. I ain't talking about swinging on nobody. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> but we read it. Yeah, okay. Amen. I'm glad you was here. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> See, I, I'm, I'm meditating the word will give us even more respect for God's way. Because the more we think about it, the more we ponder it, the more we consider it, the more we understand we're going the right way. And that regardless of what everybody else do, whether it's family, friends, and everybody else around me and you too, if we stick with the word, we're going to be all right. And God's going to make everything work out well for me and you. That's why we meditate. We can meditate in the morning. We can meditate in the noonday. We can meditate when the sun go down. The key to what I'm saying is don't put that word down. Just keep meditating the word and do what God said do. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to bless you. In fact, you're going to find out that the word of God is addictive. Praise God, especially when you start meditating that word. Hallelujah. I ain't going to say that that's one of the reasons why they call it a rock. I'm going to leave that alone. Praise God. I'm going to just say it's addictive. Blessed Amen. be the name of the Lord. And so you want to keep meditating this word. And we find out whenever we do it, though, and however we do it, our meditating God's word and his, and his works will be able to be good for me and us. It'll be good for us, and it'll be good for everybody around us, too. Because thank God for that word and what it does for me and you. Now, in order to remain bold in our Christian walk and unyielding in our stance during these perilous times and the atmospheric changes that will be prevalent in them, we have to continue to regard God's word as our standard of what's right and wrong. We have to continue to regard God's word as our right, as our standard of what's right and wrong. Notice I put a word in there, continue. 
right? Continue. Because we started off that way, but the question is, is are you going to end up that way? Because so many people start off with the things of God, but they walk away from the things of God when pressure hit them and situations and circumstances surround them that, you know, cause them to be thinking that that's something, they should do something else. Look at your neighbor and say, don't do nothing else. Don't do nothing else. Tell them, stick with the word. Stick with the word. Praise God. See, that's our standard of what's right and wrong. That's our standard of how we should live our life. That's our standard. Is anybody hearing me up in here? And since that's our standard, our standard don't change. And the word, and, and, and our standard is the word, and it flat out don't change. But we got to keep it as our standard. We can't allow circumstances and situations change our mind as to what our standard is. Right is right, and wrong is wrong. I don't care who's involved. I don't care who gets in it. I don't care who does it. I don't care old folks say who shot John. I don't care. Praise God. The only question is what did God say up in here? Does everybody hear me up in here? That includes when your family is involved. Praise God. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. The word of God is true, and that's what we're going to do. It's irrelevant what everybody else thinks. Well, see, you got to understand, you need to come with the times. Well, I'm already in the times, but I ain't changing my mind at this time because the word of God is still true. This is what it says. So when he says what a man is, that's what a man is. When he says that's what a woman is, that's what a woman is. When he tells us what a girl is, what a boy is, who should marry one another, you know, come on up in here. Everything else that he say, regardless of what's popular nowadays, that is absolutely irrelevant. What did God say? That's what we walk according to every day. We walk away according to what did God say? So when it comes to conduct, we have to continue to use God's word as our standard of what should and should not be done in terms of our conduct. And, and also the assessment of other people's conduct. Because you can do that. You can assess other people's conduct. You judging me. You judging me. No, actually the verdict has already been passed. Amen. It's in the Bible. Is anybody hearing me? I'm not judging you. God did it already. The verdict is what's in the Bible. The verdict is what is already true. This is what he says it is and it isn't too. Is anybody hear me? Go to Proverbs chapter 4, please. We have to continue to keep the word of God as what's used by us to be able to set the parameters for our lives. We have to continue to use the word of God that God gave to us to use it as a, 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 to set the parameters in our lives. Because people are going to veer from the Bible from being the standard. Excuse me, Lord. People have already veered from the Bible as being the standard. And they're using popular opinion and what movie stars say. Can I put a pause right here? As soon as you find out what a movie star say, do the opposite. Don't even, don't even think, just, you don't know who to vote for? Check with Hollywood. Whatever Hollywood say vote for, vote for the opposite person. Because they wicked, then all get out. Y'all don't want to work with me, bro. Good. I need to stay on these study nothing. Just look at Hollywood, save your study time. If they love a candidate, hurry up and vote the opposite. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 4. It's just the truth. Praise God. Proverbs chapter 4. Verse 20. Of course, you already know this is a, a word that is given t from a king to a king, teaching him how to be able to live large and in charge and everything. It's teaching his young son the way to think and what to do so that he can continue to rule in life and not be ruled by life like so many people do. This is one of the many things he taught him right here, We're starting with verse 20. He said, my son, I like the affectionate part of it, my son, like, like, like you mean something to me. That's why I'm sharing this with you. Just like God put this in the Bible because you mean something to me. We're sons of the Most High God. The Bible says he was in, the, he came to this world and the world knew him not. Hey, but, then, but them that received him gave he the power to become sons of God. Even though they believe on his name. I got anybody who received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He called us the sons of God. So this, this qualifies. He said, my son, attend to my word. Incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto them that find them. And health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. 
Notice what he says. My son, attend to my words. That word attend right there means to prick up the ear. That is to hearken. To prick up the ear. That is to hearken. Which means anytime God says something, we need to prick up yeah. our ears so that we can hearken to what he said too. When I think of pricking up our ears, I think of a dog. Uh -huh. Amen. Because our ears don't do it. As soon as we hear something, they stay in the same spot. <laughs> but a dog, dog's ear changes. It shifts the moment that it begins to hear something. You be seeing your dog just sitting around, their ears just drooping and just, you know, just sitting there, praise God, looking like a dog, you know. <laughs> you know, just looking around. And all of a sudden he hears something go, and then the ears will shift. That's called pricking up. Ears will shift. I had Adobe. Praise God, Adobe and Pinchy, praise God, yeah, and Adobe. And they, they, they ears do it strong, praise God. They, they stand up, especially if you had it cropped right back there, praise God. When it, when it stands up strong, it'll stand up and it'll just point toward it. And you'll see it look up and see, I'll be like, and because it, it's looking like, who am I going to bite? <laughs> who, 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 who am I going to jump on? Praise God. <laughs> Go, anyway, praise God. He want us to prick up so that we don't bite the wrong thing, but we listen to what God has to say. So we can hearken to what he say. Those ears position themselves to make sure they hear what it is that's being said. That's what we do. When the word of God is flowing, we listen up so we can hear what God is saying. Because God's always right. And that word he's sharing with us is always right. God, God always knows what to do. And that word he's sharing with us always tells us what to do. And, and it is our, it's, it, we can pay attention to it because it's, it's right. And it helped me Sure, everything work out right for us. Now, it also translates, the word attend, also translates to give heed, to mark, or regard. To give heed, to mark, or to regard. Which means they say, whatever God's word, whenever God says something, give heed to it. Give heed to it. Come on, some of us remember when we was younger, we wouldn't pay no attention to nobody. People would be talking to us, and we act like they ain't saying nothing. Act like we listening to Charlie Brown mama talk. Praise God. Like, wah, 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 wah. You know, that's how some folk do when the word of God is flowing. Wah, 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 wah. God said, no, 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 no. Listen up. Take heed to what I'm saying to you. I remember when I was growing up, praise God, the older people, praise God, they was, you know, they, 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 they fulfilled their role back then. Because there's supposed to be layers of people who train you and teach you. Praise God. Now, I ain't getting into that village crap. You know, praise God. But I am talking about how there's supposed to be layers of people in your own family who's supposed to be teaching you and stuff like that. You're supposed to have your brothers and sisters who are talking to you and dealing with you. You're supposed to have your mama and your daddy, which is the primary person in the midst of your house because they represent God. You're supposed to have uncles and aunts who are speaking to you too, speaking wisdom to you too. You're supposed to have grandmothers and grandfathers who are speaking words of wisdom to you too. And, and back then you had great grandmamas and great grandfathers who would be teaching, great uncles and great aunts, praise God. And they'd be preaching to you too, praise God. Well, the older ones especially, praise God, not so much the younger ones, but the older ones, grandmothers and great grandmothers and stuff like that, they, 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 they talk to you, praise God. And then they could tell you wasn't listening, praise God. And they say, 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 say listen, baby, listen up, listen up. That's not what I'm saying. Sometimes they pop you right, in, right, in, right, in, right here, right in that area. I know because I can hear a lot right there. Praise God. It's one of those little, it ain't one of them hurting ones. It's just one of them get your attention ones. Because you kind of like, ain't no paying attention. You know, and all of a sudden your eyes open up. That's what I be wanting to do with some of y'all sometimes. Praise God. I watch you. You ain't paying no attention. Just, but I remember, I ain't grandmother, I ain't grandmother. But I be wanting to like, you know, just want to pop you. Praise God. Pay attention. Praise God. Hallelujah. What I'm saying to you. Trying to tell you something that's going to change your life. Trying to change something that's going to protect your life. And you're just sitting there playing around looking at your phone. What the heck? I just want to, just want to. Amen. Glad to remember my role. I'm pastor. Pastor can't be walking around popping people in the head and stuff like that. <laughs> Go ahead and God. Oh, you can't always do what you want to do. It translates give heed. It translates mark, which means when God says something, we're supposed to mark it. Mark it as that's what I'm going to do. Mark it as something you ought to pay attention to. You ought to mark it as something you pay attention to. Does anybody hear me up in here? Praise God. Just like I, I told you, I came from the era when we put calendars on the wall. I mean, anybody remember back when we used to put calendars on the wall? Praise God. And one of the reasons why we put calendars on the wall so we can know what day it is, that was one of the reasons. 
One of the reasons why we put it on there so we can remember what's important about that date. Praise God. So when we got that calendar, we put it on the wall, and then we start writing stuff on it. Somebody's birthday, you know, anniversary, praise God, something, whatever, pay the bill. Y'all got, did nobody use that? <laughs> <Praise God. laughs> anyway, whatever, bill do, praise God. Whatever, whatever, you put, so you write stuff on, that's called marking, that you would mark your calendar, praise God, so that you would know. Sometimes you put circles around it, praise God, stars around it, hearts around it, whatever. You know, depends, just, but it was a, so that you could be able to draw attention to it. So that you're walking by it, you won't just ignore it, but it'll draw your attention to it. And then you look at it and decide what you're going to do. But you took a look at it. See, a lot of us know the word, but we don't keep a look at it. We don't, we don't keep looking at it. That's why we can forget it, especially in the middle of the situations that we're going through. We can forget what God has to say about what it is we're supposed to do. Yeah, we do. Amen. Let somebody say something you that you don't like. You forget all about love thy brother as thyself. Hallelujah. You forget all about no letting no corrupting communication proceed out of your mouth, only that which is good to edify. Because you ain't edifying nobody Once that word, when them words start flowing out of your mouth. Come on up in here. Look at your neighbor and say, if you say amen, I'll say amen. Praise God. Amen. And it also means to regard. To regard. Whereas we regard the word of God. The word regard means pay attention to. Pay attention to. It will pay you to pay attention to what God says to you. Because remember, the word of God is profitable. Praise God. That's what the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy. It's profitable. And so it's going to pay if we pay attention to what God says to me and you. I can speak for myself. I can't speak for nobody else. I can look back over my life when I sit and think things over. I can wish I'd have paid attention to some things that was being said to me. Because I can remember some things that were said to me that I didn't pay no attention to. Because I was young, thought I knew what I was doing. Brash and, you know, because I got a little money in my pocket called cash, you know. Got it going on, you know, diamond in the back, sun rooftop, digging the seams with a gangster lean, woo woo, you know. Even got a girl or two that I could be able to call, you know, my boo. Y'all don't know nothing about none of this. Got the pair and the spare, prayers God, hallelujah. <laughs> Y'all don't know nothing about that. So you think you know something. But a lot of times you don't pay attention to people who really do know something. They tell you something, you just play it off. Look at your neighbor and say, this ain't the time to be playing off what God said. This, 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 this ain't the time to be playing off what God said. This, this ain't the time. This ain't the time. You need to, you need, you need, you need to pay attention to what God's saying to you. <laughs> you need to pay attention to what God's saying to you. Pay close attention to what God said. Because, see, I learned something about God. Praise God. Y'all probably know it already, but, you know, it takes some of us to a little longer than you. Praise God. And I, I, I found out God know more than I do. I really did. I found out. That way, as soon as he started talking, I think there's a high probability he knows something I don't know. And he's trying, trying to tell me something. I found out another thing about God that helped me a lot. It might not help you, but it helped me a lot. If it helped you, cool, use it. If it don't, leave it on the on the pew next to you, and we'll, we'll collect them at the end of the service. Praise God. But this, risk, this, this wisdom right here. He, he, he knows the end from the beginning. Amen. Which means he knows everything that's coming your way. And since he knows everything coming your way, he's always going to tell you in advance what you need to know so you can be ready for it when he gets there. Always tells you in advance. Always tells you in advance. Holy Spirit said he'll show you things to come. So in the midst of the word that he's sharing with me and you, he'll show us things that's going to help us before it gets there so that we know what to do when it gets there. We've already been told. If you've already been told, there's somebody coming with a blue dress, pink lipstick. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's, that's coming to talk to you. And don't, don't even bother to talk to them because what they're going to do is try to rob you if you get into a conversation with them. But if you don't get in a conversation with them, they won't be able to rob you. Praise God. Then when you saw this person come up here with these blue dress and pink lipstick, and they try to get in a conversation, you'll be thinking like, mm-mm. Because you paid attention to what was being said to you. That's what God will do. God will warn you of things that come. In fact, the Bible is written for our admonition, which means mild warning. He tells us in advance what we're going to go through. 
That's one of the reasons why I believe that we should always pay attention to the word that's being shared with me and you. Amen. Amen. And then he tells us, praise God, verse 20 again, thank you Jesus for your magnificent word. It reads, my son attend to my words, incline thy ear unto my sayings, let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart. Now notice he said, let them not depart from thy eyes. Now why would he tell us that? Because they can depart from our eyes. Amen. Because they can depart from our eyes. There are many accidents that occur because the, the road departed from their eyes. The people riding down the street, praise God, on their way someplace, thinking that everything is in control because they saw the way it was when they was looking. But then situations change when they stop looking. Somebody changed lanes, somebody put on brakes. Somebody did something else like that too, and then all of a sudden, bam, or then they look up at the last second, ah, you know, slamming on brakes and then still hitting all that kind of stuff too. And then like, oh man, that's an accident. Technically speaking, it wasn't an accident, it was an incident. It was an incident where some fool wasn't paying attention to what they were supposed to do. Because it was right there in front of them. I mean, that's why God gave you this big old thing called a windshield. So that you could be able to see right in front of you what's coming and stuff like that. And the word of God will put right in front of you what's about to come. Amen. And he told you, I want you to keep it there. He said, let them not depart from thine eyes. That's one of the reasons why we meditate the word of God. That's one of the reasons why we study the word of God. And he said, until he come, I want you to do it diligently too. Until I show up to part the sky to get you and I, you already know what you're going to do. You got something to do with your day. He's already assigned you with something to do with your day. Now, I know some folk right now, they think like, now, see, I got other things to do in my day. Well, go ahead. You got other things. Go ahead and do it. But at the same time, that don't change it. You're still supposed to do what you're supposed to do. I had other things to do, to, to do other than pay my bill. I got busy. Well, your lights is off. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I had other things to do, you know. But then this and that. Well, hey, man, now you're fired. First thing. But you did what you had to do. Go ahead and do what you're going to do, because it's going to cost you. Because <laughs> the Bible said the curse cost of this does not come. So when this stuff start happening, it don't happen for nothing. And don't, don't be trying to put it all on the devil. The devil caused this to happen in my life. Well, let's go back and take a look. Let's go back. I told you, when because when, I'm going to be at this court case up in, up in, up in, in heaven, praise God. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be right there. I'm going to be right there in the stands. Because I, I want to I want, I want hear his verdict and I want to see his face when the verdict comes of how he's going to be thrown in the pit forever. I want to be right there. In fact, when they get ready to throw him in the pit, I told you, I'm elbowing my way to the front. I'm, I'm going to be in the front. I'm going to be in the front. I'm going to be as close to Jesus as possible, praise God. And I'm going to time Jesus' kick when they get ready to kick him over into the pit. And by the time Jesus' foot touch it, mine going to hit him too, praise God. And I'm, I'm going to kick him straight into the pit, <laughs> I want to hear what he say. Oh, I'm like, what are you going to do now, devil? Anyway. <laughs> I've said that for a reason. <laughs> yeah, it's not always the devil. That's what I wanted to say. It was not always that. I think when he get in the court case, praise God, they're going to accuse him of, let's just say, 50, 11 things. But then he's only going to be guilty of, you know, 50, 10. <laughs> Nigga, but what about the other 11 things? Whatever the difference is. What, whatever, whatever. <laughs> this ain't math class, so we ain't worried about that, right? <laughs> whatever the difference is. <laughs> it wasn't him. Because they're going to say, no, nah, he's not guilty of those. They did that to themselves. Because they just wasn't paying attention to what God said. God told them. They just didn't pay no attention. Amen. This is what he said, verse 21. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those things, unto, unto those that find them, and health to all thy flesh. Notice he said, keep them in the midst of thine heart, right there in the center of your heart. Make sure it stays there. Now the word heart right there also translates mind and understanding. It also translates mind and understanding. So God said, I'm going to give you a word that tells you what you should think and do. And I want you to make sure you keep it right there in the middle of your mind and in the middle of your understanding too. 
That's what we ought to do every day to be able to make sure that we continue to remember what God has to say so that we can be able to keep it right there in the middle of our heart and right there in the middle of our minds, right there in the middle of our understanding. Because God said, I'm giving you a word that gives you understanding of everything that you need. And I want you to keep it in the middle of your understanding. Because if you don't keep God's word in the middle of your understanding, you'll start understanding things correctly, incorrectly. If you don't keep God's word in the middle of your understanding, you'll start understanding things incorrectly. If you don't keep God's word in the middle of your mind, then you're going to be mindful about something else, and something else is going to be on your mind. And what be on your mind? Then be on your mind. That's why I said we need to keep it with all diligence. The word diligence right there, interestingly enough, means a guard. That's whether it's the man, the post, or the prison. It's a guard. Whether it's the man, the post, or the prison. In other words, he said it guarded like it's something important. God, it like it's something important. Let's, do, let's deal with the man. For instance, praise God, public officials, praise God, high-ranking public officials, many times are given secret service to be able to watch them and police them and, and, and protect them, praise God. And they'll walk around, and they won't allow themselves to be able to get focused on anything else other than their job. They won't allow themselves to get to kicking it with somebody and stuff like that, too. You know, can't nobody walk up to them and hand them a, uh, a cell phone say, hey, can I take a picture with you? And they'll be like, yeah, you know. Yeah. And put their glasses back on. You know, yeah. <laughs> pull, out their, pull out their pistols and hold them out like that. <laughs> like that you know, taking pictures with you. They don't do that. In fact, if you come up to them, they say, excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, sir. And then they will move you out the way. Why? Because they're on, they're, on a, they're on their job. My job is to watch for this and protect this man. Protect this woman and make sure don't nothing happen to him. Praise God. And, and, and that's the way we're supposed to watch over this word that God gave us. Because somebody at any point in time can come and take from us what God said. Replace it with something else other than what God said. Give us a mindset to start thinking things differently and stuff like that too. Especially when Satan starts putting faces on it that means something to you. Because he'll put faces on it. That's one of the reasons why he loved using sports stars. And that's why he loved using movie stars. Because he already know that they have a certain level of affluence in people's lives and influence in people's lives. So he'll attack their children and cause their children to be wrong. And then have a society, you know, that they live in, which thinks wrong, to own the wrong thing to do with it. And then they'll parade that foolishness across the TV so that we can see it, so that we can be able to see it and be able to think, oh, that's, that's something. No, no, guard your heart with all diligence. Keep God's word in the middle of your mind. Because if you don't keep it in the middle of your mind, it's starting edging over toward the edge. And then it'll get moved over a little bit more, where it's no longer the center most of your thinking. Then it'll move over a little bit more until before you know it, it's no longer a part of your thinking. Whereas you don't even think about what God says when you think about what you should do. You don't even think about what God said when it comes time to understanding what you should do. You'll think about another thought that took its place. Is anybody hearing me up here? So you ought to keep it. Guard it like the man or the post. Praise God. You know, in the military, praise God, they might have you guard a post. Praise God. Garden, valuable stuff. Usually anything that's guarded is valuable. Praise God. It might be nuclear stuff, nuclear equipment. It might be weaponry and things like that too. Praise God. Missiles or something like that. They have you guarded. Praise God. So anytime you see anything that's headed, praise God. Halt. Who goes there? Praise God. Because you want to know. Because you want to pay attention to what's happening and stuff like that. Not walk through life. do the old, old, ho the old. You know, just having a life. Or taking naps and stuff like that. <laughs> You're supposed to be guarding something nuclear. <laughs> Me, 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 me. Like you wanted the Three Stooges and stuff like that. Me, 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 me. <laughs> no, you're supposed to be alert. You're supposed to be awake. You're supposed to pay attention to what you're doing. Because the times are already wrong. And it's happening and, 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 and it's, it's, it's becoming prevalent. So that means that more folk that you knew who were right are going to start turning wrong. More folk that you knew who were right are going to start turning wrong. You start watching grown men come to press conferences with girls' hairdos. <laughs> you be like, oh, man. And then your little son be like, I want mine like that. No, you don't. No, you don't, baby. No, you, no, you don't. That's, you, know, you a dude. In fact, I'm cutting all your hair off <laughs> right now. Praise God. <laughs> Give you an old folk Covatis. I'm going to give you old school, old school Covatis. That way we ain't got to worry about nothing. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Guard it like a post. Halt who go there. Because you, 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 it's something about God's word is valuable. You need to protect it. You need to protect it. Or a prison. You know, there's folk up in prison. You don't want to get out. Hey Amen. I know some of y'all want them to get out because you're related to them. But I'm talking about some real, real hardened folk that's dangerous to society. That thing like that. Where if, you know, where if, you know, they muzzle them before they carry them out and stuff like that. Strap them up in stuff, you know, and muzzle them, and then they carry them out. Because these are wild, like they act like they're wild animals and stuff like that. So they got to keep them in protection. So, then, so when you got a place like that, you got to guard it. That's why they got stages that it's got to pass through. And, you know, where they, you know, lock down all the stages. Don't act like y'all know what I'm talking about. You've seen enough movies. Praise God, huh? Well, you got to lock down one area, and then you, bzz, you got to buzz in, and then you go into the next area, and then bzz, you got to buzz in, go into the next area, and stuff like that. Hallelujah. Why is that? Because they got to make sure that whoever's coming through is right. So they don't break out folk and cause folk to break out and stuff like that too. Well, God gave you a word that, that, that you're supposed to guard and be able to make sure that nobody comes through and takes it. Nobody comes through and exchange it. You're supposed to guard it like it's something important. Guard Because it, it is. Guard it like it's somebody important. It is. It's your life, your loved one's life, people that are connected to you, people who you who trusted you. It's all kind of people that's going to be affected if we don't do what he do. That's why he says, read it again, verse 20, my son, attend to my words, incline thine ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine, e thine, thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For, here's the reason why, they are life unto them that find them. I like, they are life unto them that find them. See, God, the, the life of God is in the word of God. At the time God give you a word, he's trying to do something to your life. Trying to give you life. Hallelujah. Satan's words are death. With the word death, by definition, means separation from life. And so everything that Satan's saying, he was trying to separate you from the life that God has in store for you. Look at your neighbor and say, that's why we ought not listen to him. Mm-hmm. Because everything he's trying to tell you is trying to separate you from life. There's a life that God wants you to have. He's trying to steal it. There's a life that try, God's trying to get, let you have, and then he's trying to make sure that you don't get it. And now the question is, are you going to cooperate with him, or are you going to cooperate with God? Look at your neighbor saying, I think we should cooperate with God. I think we should cooperate. Amen. So that way you got to do what he say then, if you're going to cooperate with God. Keep it, because out of it flows the issues of life. We already know that word issues means excess and boundaries. It means excess and boundaries. So that means that that word that God shares with you is going to establish for you the boundaries of your life. Establish for you what the exits are for your life. Amen. Your exits decide what comes in and out of your life. Your exits decide what comes in and out of your life. We have various doors around this place. We have mo mucho doors all over the place. Praise God. I'm working on it. I'm going to get better. Praise God. We got, <laughs> we, we got doors all over the place. Praise God. Huh? But do you know you can't get in everyone? Amen. Do you know, even though the door is there, you can't get in it because we got them locked. Praise God. Why? Because we try to steer the, the traffic in a particular direction so we can be able to see who's coming in and who's coming out. All right. That's why like, over in the other building, praise God, the people who work here are supposed to make sure that if there's, they're the last one in that room, that leave that room, they're supposed to make sure that door is locked. Praise God. So nobody comes back through there. Praise God. Why? So we can steer all the traffic into one direction where somebody is, where somebody can see what's going on. Because we got to decide who comes in, who comes out. Whether they walk in or whether they carried out. <laughs> hey, hey, man. <laughs> hey, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> hey, you got to do what you got to do. You know how it is, bro. You got to do what you got to do. Praise God. Amen. So they walk, walk in you know, or they walk out and get carried out. What are the other? Praise God. Hallelujah. But we'll pray for them as they're on their way out, though. Praise God. Amen. Make sure they're there, you know, make sure that they, you know, know the Lord, praise God, on their way, just in case they meet him before they get to the hospital. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, amen. amen. So, anyway. So, out of it comes the issues of life. So, God's word is what's supposed to establish the issues for your life. Not give you issues. That's Satan's word. Satan's word gives you issues. 
God's word establishes the issues of your life, the X's and boundaries in the middle of your life. It tells us where, what's too far. X's and, let me do boundaries. Boundaries will establish for you what's right and what's wrong. It'll establish for you what's within the parameters that's okay and what's, old folks say, too far. Well, you don't went too far. You don't cross the line because the line is the boundary. You shouldn't cross that line. And see, God established the lines for us. Does anybody hear me up here? And once again, since God's word is always right, then the boundaries that he said are? Right. Amen. Since God's word is always right, then the boundaries he said for us are? Right. Amen. So if he sets the boundary, then it's? Right. Amen. Which means that we're only right if we do what he said to. Because once we cross the boundary, then we wrong. Praise God. Amen. It's, it, look at your neighbor and say, this ain't rocket science. Praise God. It really isn't. That's why I always say, you, it take a devil to confuse this. It take a devil to confuse this, because this is so simple. God said, whatever God says is right, do what he said do, everything going to work out right. Praise God. It's Christianity in a nutshell. Praise God. On a living Christian life. Find out what God said, do what he said, you're all right. Find out what he said is wrong, leave it alone, you're going to be all right. Hallelujah. But do it with all diligence, though, because out of it, it shows the issues of life, which means we can't be lax in this. We can't be slack in this. Why? Because God gave us this word to protect us. God gave us this word to keep us. God gave us this word to inform us, to instruct us, so that the devil won't be uh, successfully causing destruction to come into the midst of our life. That's why we got to guard this word, hold on to this word. Because this is word that's going to give us life and keep our life. This is word that's going to look out for me and you, make sure everything works out well for you. That way you ain't got to be worried about everything else that's going on. All you got to do is check one thing. Do I have God's word? Amen. Am I lined up with God's word? If I'm lined up with God's word, I'm good. I said, if I'm lined up with God's word, I'm good. I remember I told you before, act like I didn't tell you. It'll bless you. Praise God. I remember something jacked up was going on. You know, going around, you know, the accusation, that'd be a better way for it. An accusation was going on that just bothered me, praise God, because it included me in it. And I'm living a holy life, finally. Praise God during this particular, I'm finally living a holy life at this particular time. So I'm doing everything right now. I'm getting these accusations. I'm like, hold up, you know, what's, what's up with this, you know? And I was starting to get a little perturbed. And, you know, that old band started rising up. Y'all don't know nothing about that old people. You got one. Don't look at me like that. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> one that's supposed to be passed away, but they actually kind of like just lay dormant for a while. And then once in a while something come up here, rise back up and stuff like that. Try to. Amen. Oh, if you don't stop, you me will. Well, God. And move out the way. I got this. And move you out the way. <laughs> Forget y'all, you Christianity. Well, I was getting perturbed by something that was happening, an accusation that was coming. And the Lord came and spoke to me. I, I love the Lord. He speaks to me. Praise God. Y'all got, y'all, he do that to you too? Everybody put your hand in your hand and say, Lord, thank you for speaking to me. Thank you for talking to me. Because see, sometimes we need to be talked to by the Lord. Praise God. Because can't nobody do it like he do it. Somebody else will ignore it. Be like, shut up. Praise God. But God, God will speak to us. And we'll be like, we'll listen. He Lord and everything. He, he do that. He good at it. Anyway, he spoke to me. He said, son, he said, why are you bothered? And I'm like, what do you mean, why am I bothered? You see what's going on. You see, you see what they're saying about me. You see what's happening. You see what's happening. You see what he says. Son, look down. See where your feet are. If your feet are standing in right, don't worry about what they say. Because I'll protect you. As long as you're within the parameters of right, I'll protect you. He said, and if you see your feet outside of the parameters of right, hurry up and get back in right <laughs> so I can protect you. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So I found out a long time ago, only thing I need to focus on is where am I standing? Am I standing on God's word? Am I standing within the parameters of the boundary that he set? Am I within that? I'm good to go. Because I'm in Christ. I'm protected. I'm going to be kept. So don't be worried about what people are thinking about you. Don't be worried about what they're saying about you. Don't worry about all the accusations and the threats that they have to you. Look down, see where you feet are. Are you standing within the parameters of the boundaries that God established for your life, which is the word of God? If you are, 
You're all right. And everything going to work out right. Turn to Ephesians chapter 6, please. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your magnificent word. Once again, if you don't use that revelation, just leave it on the side of the couch. You know, see it on the, on the pew. We'll get it. We'll get it later. Hallelujah. Just don't mess with the, the, the wrapper that's on it, please. See, God gives his people the word to assist us in guarding our hearts and to continue to live the Christian life boldly during these perilous times. I say God gives his people the word to assist us in guarding our hearts and to continue to live the Christian life boldly during these perilous times. Because God wants you to live boldly during these times. Be all outspoken in what you do. Not whispering, but you live it out. So it's time to live Christianity loudly. Yes, sir. I'm talking about you know, spiritual. Ephesians chapter 6, begin reading at verse 10. It says in verse 10, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. Having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quenched all the fiery darts of the women, of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Which means don't just look out for yourself, look out for everybody else. Praise God. Look out for your brethren too. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now once again, God gives his people the word to be able to assist us in guarding our hearts and to continue to be able to live our Christian lives boldly during these perilous times. Now if you go down to verse 16, you'll see that during these perilous times, Satan is going to be doing something to us that God said, I'm going to give you a word to protect you. Verse 16, here's the word, one of the things the word will do uh, protect us. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So during these perilous times, Satan is going to be shooting at you shooting flaming, fiery arrows at you. Now that's important because arrows penetrate. Yeah, arrows penetrate. And their penetration, it's their penetration that causes harm and, wit and weakness. It's their penetration. I want to clarify that because I don't want you to think the shooting of the arrow is what causes the problem. Amen. It's the penetration of the arrow that causes the problem. Amen. It's not the shooting of the arrow that causes the problem. It's the penetration of the arrow. It's kind of like if you fall off a building. The fall ain't going to hurt you. <laughs> it's that sudden landing. That's what's going to be the problem. Praise God. That's where the problem is. The fall don't hurt nobody. Praise God. <laughs> it's the landing that causes the problem. And the arrows that shot are irrelevant unless they penetrate. And God has given you a word so that they never penetrate so that no weapon formed against you can prosper because your righteousness is of the Lord. That way you don't have to be sitting there worried about whether people shooting at you or not. You don't have to worry about what they're saying about you. You don't have to worry about all the things they said. You just make sure it don't penetrate you. And God said, I've given you what's necessary so that it don't penetrate you. Because their penetration is an introduction of something foreign into our body. The penetration of an arrow is an introduction of something foreign into our body. Just like Satan wants to, pen, wants to introduce something foreign into your heart. A thought that you didn't think until after it penetrated. An idea that you didn't have until after it penetrated. A way of seeing things, a way of doing things, a way of understanding things that you did not have until it penetrated you. Because he wants to alter your existence. He wants to alter your thinking. He wants to alter your understanding and change it to something that's going to hurt and harm you and make you weaker. 
The penetration, their penetration is an introduction of something foreign into our body, something that was never supposed to be there, that disrupts and throws off the entire delicate system that God designed, that throws off the entire delicate system that God designed. God designed a system to be able to operate our lives according to and as long as we operate the way God said do, then we'll be healthy all the days of our life and everything will work out beautiful for me and you. But let something disrupt the system. That's where the problem comes in. That's why it's called a dis-ease. Praise God, because it takes away ease, because it comes in and changes everything from flowing like it's supposed to. Does anybody hear me up in here? Hallelujah. Sickle cell is where the cells ain't operating like they're supposed to, but they're sickling. Praise God, in ways they ain't supposed to be doing. Sickling, yeah, they're sickling. They're they're getting twisted and the shape is all jacked up and stuff like that. So they don't flow like they're supposed to. So they clot up and block up and don't do what they're supposed to. See, that was of the devil. Amen. Praise God, because God didn't design it that way. Does that make sense? You design your cells to be sickled. Praise God. Is anybody hearing me up in here? I'm not being light about it. I'm just being real about it. Praise God. Hallelujah. You can clean it up later if you want to tell somebody about it. Praise God. See, flaming arrows are the ones that he shoots at us, though. Flaming arrows. Flaming arrows penetrate, and then they cause an initial harm, causing an initial harm when they penetrate, but then they continue to cause even more harm later. They, they're, they're flaming arrows, which causes initial harm when they penetrate, and then they cause even more harm later. God's telling us what kind of thoughts Satan's going to be centered at us. That will harm you when it originally penetrates, but it's going to get worse and worse and worse. Whereas once that arrow penetrates, they cause the initial harm, but the flames cause the harm to spread and cause increased harm. Until before you know it, that area that was strong begins to weaken and, and the weakness spreads and then it gets weaker and weaker and weaker until you're consumed with foolishness. You're consumed with this stupid thought that's running in you. Then before you know it, you've been taken over by it. You're dead to the things of God. You're dead to the ways of God. But you become alive to Satan's death and begin to start conducting yourself his way too. That's what's going to be happening to a lot of so-called religious leaders. Praise God. Is that they've already, their hearts have already been penetrated. Sometimes it's because one of their family members were caught up in something. And they try and operate in love. You know, we're supposed to love each other and and, and operating grace to one another and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But wrong is still wrong. And right is still right. It don't change that. Hallelujah. I said wrong is still wrong. And right is still right. I don't care who face on it. Does that make sense? Once that arrow penetrated causes initial harm. But then it'll spread and cause even increased harm. But notice, arrows are something that's shot from a distance. Arrows are something that's shot from a distance. <laughs> well, why is Satan shooting arrows from a distance? Well, because technically, Satan is actually afraid of you. So he tries to weaken you from a distance before he even cl gets close to you. He has to weaken you so he can finish you out, finish you off. Then he shows up so he can finish you off. But he's going to be shooting lies and, thought and, and, and crazy thoughts at you all over the place. Mm -hmm. From a distance. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why you need to have this shield, praise God, that God gives you, which is, the word of, is your faith in the word of God. Because our faith in the word of God, our trust in the word of God, our confidence in the word of God, I'm going to say it as right as I can. The shield of faith is not the word of God. It's our faith in the word of God. It's our confidence and our trust in the word of God. Because if you don't have confidence and trust in the word of God, it'll penetrate. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, that's why you have the confidence that God's word is right. You've got to have confidence that right is right and wrong is wrong. And then that lie will stop right there and it won't go any further. It won't. It, because it'll be stopped by your faith. That's why faith is the victory. That's why faith is how we live our lives. And if there's no other time that you just shall live by faith, it's going to be right now. Because that's what stops the arrows. It's your faith in the word of God. 
Faith comes by hearing. And hear, hearing is written in the, which means you need to, mm -hmm, look at your neighbor and say, since you know that, then it's time to do that. Say, say since, you, since you know that, it's time to do that now. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because that's if you're going to be in faith. Because if you ain't, you're going to be a pin cushion. You're going to be a cushion for all kind of foolish ideas that Satan is going to be sending to you. And they're going to be spreading on the inside of you. And we're going to listen to you getting worse and worse by the way that you speak. Worse and worse by the things that you do. We can, we're going to watch you deteriorate and get less and less. Right before our very eyes too. And we're going to be trying to put the fire out. you know, But, but at the same time, you're the one God, God given you the, the shield. He didn't give me the shield for you. He gave me the shield for me. Because each one of those shields was designed for each person. Amen. Amen. I said each one of those shields was designed for each person. Does that make sense? Like you might have a person that's way taller than me. You know, they, they, they shield is an, encumbered, is an encumbrance to me. And if I should trade the shields with them and gave them my shield, then it wouldn't cover everything. It'd be stuff that still get hit. They might hold it up like that, and all of a sudden, whoosh, and get, hit them in the leg. That, oh, you know, because it wasn't the right kind of shield. Those shields were, were, were set up to be the perfect size for you. Perfect size for you. That's how God's word is. He's going to do it. He's going to tailor make it to each and every one of us. It's going to tailor make it to each and every one of us. Praise God. That's what it's going to do. And thank God for the word of God. It did it anyway. I, I'm talking about mine. Y'all saw me cut it off, right? It cuts it back on. I hate the government. Praise God. You're talking about the intrusive. Good God, I'm a mm -hmm, big brother. I tell you, I'm telling you. Leave it alone. I did it right there in front of y'all. Y'all saw that, right? Mm hmm. Arrows are shot from a distance, but they're designed to penetrate. But God gave us a shield to be able to protect us. Turn to Psalms number 18, please. Mm -hmm. Psalms number 18. See, God knows the devil's strategy. So he provides us that which we need to protect us ahead of time. I said, so he provides us that which he needs to protect us ahead of time. And that's the word. That's why I say to y'all all the time, praise God, if you couldn't come to the service, make sure you get the word, because that word was still for you. If you couldn't be there, no condemnation, stuff happens, got stuff to do, praise God, life got to be lived, and it's got multiple responsibilities too. I clearly understand that. No, no condemnation, but get the word. Because there was a word that God was sharing that he wanted you to hear. That's why he said it up in here, up in here, up in here so that you can be protected from what's on the way. Because you already know in advance what God has to say. And then when you hear it and hear it and hear it like you're supposed to do, you'll have the faith in what God is saying to you, so that when that arrow come through, it will have no effect on you. You just look up later and be like, dang, look at all these arrows on my shield. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 18. I'm seeing if you're paying attention. Psalms number 18, stanza number 30, please. It says, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. Now that word buckler right there means a shield. That is a small one or buckler. It's a shield that is a small one. A buckle. So God's word is a shield to you. It is a shield to you. It's a small one, but it's a shield to you. Kind of Captain America style. You know. It's a small one. That's one of the reasons why God shares with you so much word. Because every time he shares with you some more word, your shield gets bigger. And every time he shares with you more word about another subject, then your shield gets even bigger. And it keeps getting bigger until before you know it, it covers everything that you need. Figuratively means, I like this, it means a protector as the scaly hide of the crocodile. The protector. Uh, it means a protector as the scaly hide of a crocodile. In other words, ain't nothing getting through the end through that. Because can't nothing get through that scaly hide. 
That's why if you have to kill a crocodile, you have to do it from up under. Praise God. You can't do it from the top. You got to do it from up under. Praise God. Not unless you got a big old shotgun or something like that. Poof, you bust it through. Praise God. But other than that, if you really out of fire, you got to turn it over. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because it's, it's, the meat is up under there. Praise God. The scales are on the top. Praise God. So it's got like an armor plating on the top. Praise God. You could be hitting and hitting and hitting it, and it ain't going to help. Praise God. But you turn that sucker over and hit him in his throat. <laughs> He'll start coughing. <laughs> you ever seen a crocodile cough? Good. Praise God. I was going to say, you was too close. Praise God if you saw one. <laughs> but anyway, you can, you can, you can, you can be, able to, be able to make sure you cover everything. Turn to Proverbs chapter 30. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 30. Hallelujah. So don't say bless you to a crocodile that's coughing. Because he'll say he already has. That's why you're here. Praise God. Proverbs chapter 30. See, the word of God shares with us. The word that God shares with us will be our shield to protect us from the flaming arrows which the uh, lying devil is going to be sending our way for all the lies that are headed toward me and you. That shield is going to protect me and you. We're in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5. It reads like this. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Notice every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. And I like how he says every word of God is pure. And then he says, he is a shield under them that put their trust in him. Because God gives you his word to be able to protect you. God gives you his word. If you just, protect, you just believe God's word, it'll protect you. Because God and his word are one. So he's given you his word to be able to protect you so that it can make sure that nothing happens to you. Now this word trust, because that's what we need to do is trust in him. That word trust right there means to flee for protection. To flee for protection, which means that any look like any danger is there, we run to God for protection, and he'll give us a word. We run to God, and since God and his word is one, we can run to the word and better find out what God has to say about it. Got any questions about whether this is right or wrong? Go to the word, and you'll know what, you'll find out whether it's right or wrong. If you have any questions about whether you should think this or not think that or do this or not do that, go to the word. It'll tell you exactly what to think and do so that you can be protected like God wants you to. Because his word is true. It's tried and true. That word, praise God, trust also translates to confide in, to make refuge, and to put trust. To confide in, to make refuge, and to put trust. So we should go, we can confide in the word. Praise God. Share our heart. And let it tell us what our part is and think like that too. We can make refuge in it. It's a, place, it's a safe place to be. So anytime you need a safe place to be, get in the Word. And the Word will tell you exactly where, where, you, where you should be. And you know that when you're there, you're going to be okay. And we can put our trust in it. Praise God. Bet your bottom dollar you'll never hear yourself holler that God did not do what he said he's going to do. And that's that he'll protect you if you get in that Word like he said do. Turn to Psalms number 91, please. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your magnificent word. Just about through, just about through, Psalms number 91. I love the Lord. Y'all do too? Yes. We got something in common, baby. We got something in common. See, God gives us his truth to protect us. Mm-hmm. Starting with stanza number one, Psalms number 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He's going to be right there overshadowing you. I will say of the Lord. What are you going to say about the Lord? He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Psst. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Notice his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Now we already know John chapter 17 verse 17 says thy word is truth. So he says thy truth shall be my shield and buckler. 
So that, that word that God gave is going to be both the shield and the buckler. Now, I like this buckler. The shield is powerful, but I'm going to just do the buckler. That buckler right there means something surrounding the person that is a shield. Something that's surrounding the per person that is a shield. So God's word is not just going to stay in front of you to be your front God. Not just going to stand behind you to be your real God. But it's going to be all around you. All around. It's going to be all around you. Praise God. Such words, there's not an angle that the devil can get to you when you allow that word to be able to be a buckler to you. There won't be an angle that the devil can get to you if you just allow this word to be able to be a buckler to you. God got you covered coming and going. God got you, God got you, he's standing by your side. He's over you, banner over you is love. He got your back, he got your front, he's your shield. He's, look at your neighbor and say, we good to go, baby. We good, we good to go. We good to go when you got God's word. That's why we can, we can I, I will say of the Lord, he is my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Will be a shield and a buckler to me. Look to the point that you got this shield and buckler all around you. Look what you can think. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fly by day. So they're going to them arrows again, praise God. But you don't have to be afraid because we got the word. Amen. We trust in God's word. So I ain't got to be afraid. I ain't got to be like walking around trying to figure out where is it coming from? Where, is it, where can it possibly come from? It don't matter where it come from. God got me covered. Praise God all the way around. All I need to do is hold on to this word. He got me covered all the way around. I don't need to know where it's coming from and stuff like that and ducking and stuff like that. And, you know, I ain't going to be worried about all that. It's a sniper up on the top. I ain't got to be worried about all that. God got us covered. That way we can walk through life cool, calm, collected, not walking around all fearful and scared. See, ch children of God ain't supposed to be walking around fearful and scared. We bold as a lion. Yeah. And one reason why we bold as a lion, because we got a word that ain't lying. We, it, it's surrounding us. It's keeping us. Praise God. Look at your neighbor and say, God got you. Tell him he got me too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's if we say of him that what he's saying. Turn back to Ephesians chapter 6. We're just about through. For the day. For the day. Ephesians chapter 6. Hallelujah. That excites me, praise God. Because I remember back when I was in the streets, praise God, I was always looking over my shoulder. Mm -hmm. Amen. Going to air, got to look around the air before you sit down. <coughs> Y'all know nothing about none of this, let me just. Praise God. Excuse me for a second. I was getting choked up thinking about it. <laughs> 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 you had to go around looking around with who went away, who's around, and what's going on. And oh, y'all don't know nothing about none of this, man. I mean, I'm so glad I'm saved. I'm telling you, I'm so glad I'm saved. I like saved life. Life, life is good. Like just walk in, walk out, just go. Now you don't lose your street sense now. Praise God. But at the same time, you ain't got to be walking around scared either. Praise God. Nervous all up in the service. Mm -hmm. Ephesians, chapter, Ephesians chapter 6. That's why it says in verse 16, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to, uh, to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And this is all so that we can do what it says back in verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to, to stand, stand therefore. See, what, what God gives us, to protect us, we can stand against the wiles of the devil, the trickery, the chicanery, the, the lies, and the things he's going to say to me and you. We can stand against all of that without worries and without fear. We can stand. That word stand right there is a military term, which means hold your ground. It's a military term, which means hold your ground. See, God wants us to hold our ground. See, Jesus came in and, and won the victory for me and you. Thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But Jesus' victory against Satan is the result of a military offense that won us ground. Ground that we can now stand on. It's supposed to be demilitarized zones. It's supposed to be a place where we can be able to stand safely. So the ground that Jesus' military won for us 
includes a place that we can stand. Now through the word given to us by God, God has given a place where we can stand. Saying this is where I say, I'm, that I'm, this is where you said I'm supposed to stand. You told me I'm supposed to stand right here. You supposed to be I'm supposed to stand in right here. And if I stand right here, I'm in standing in right. So he gave us a place to stand. It's called right. Somebody say it's called right. God gave us a place to stand. It's called right. Wherever, if you stand where God told you to stand, you're right. So that means everybody else is saying you're wrong. It's hitting your shield of faith and it ain't going no further because you know you're right. It's a place to live. I said it's a place to live. So through the word of God given to us by God, God has given a place where we can be able to live our lives. I said, we can live our lives. And that, and that place is called peace. I said, that place is called peace. Because the Prince of Peace has given us a place where we can be able to live, and that's a place called peace. Jerusalem. Praise God. We can live in peace. That way we don't have to be living no stressful life. Come on, we can live with a wonderful life. We can be walking around enjoying ourselves. Everybody else is all agitated and irritated, but we cooled in a cucumber. They used to put cucumbers in the refrigerator. That's why I say cool as a cucumber. <laughs> Peace is the state of existence that's absent of agitating passions. It's that state of existence that's absent of agitating passion. It's that state of existence where everything is intact and tired, where there's nothing missing, nothing broken. So God said, if you just stand in this place that I give you, if you just live your life standing in the place that I've given you, then you're going to have peace all the days of your life. You ain't going to have no agitating passions. You're going to live a life that's absent of agitating passions. You're going to live a life where everything is intact, everything's entire, nothing missing, nothing broken. Praise God. Even though you're living in a world that's broken, even though you got all this calamity going on around you, everything's going to be fine for you because you're standing where God told you to stand. But the key is you got to make sure you keep standing there. That's what the shield of faith is designed to do, to allow you to be able to continue to stand in the ground that God has given you. So what we, the believers, are actually doing is holding on to the ground that Jesus has already won for us. That's why we're not technically fighting a battle. We're technically, we're holding the ground that was already won for us in battle. We already know what's right. We're just going to stick with what's right. We already know what God said, is, which is true. We're just going to hold on to the truth. Because without God, what God provides us about what to use to protect us, then we cannot successfully stand against the wiles of the devil. We'll end up losing the ground that's given to us by our Father. So instead of standing in a place that he said is right, we'll get knocked off of our perch and we'll end up someplace that's wrong. We won't keep the place that he intended us to be able to live our lives. So therefore that peace and everything else that we were supposed to have, we won't have no more. And we'll be agitated just like everybody else. You think it's going to be easier for you if you just go along with what they say, but no, it's not. It's going to become more difficult for you. That's why you got to stick and stay. Just listen to what God has to say. Know that his word is a shield all about you. It's your shield and your buckler. That's going to cover you on all angles. And so that you can be able to stay in that place of peace and know everything is going to be fine because you're going to be protected by the God divine. He's going to make sure everything work out well for me and you. Just stick with the word that he gives me and you. Get your faith together in what he said. Believe what he said to be true. And let God be God and let him do what he want to do for you. We'll stop right there for today. We'll pick up on some of this next time. Hallelujah. Anybody get anything from the word today? Anybody? Anybody? That's a couple people that made it worth it. Every head bow, please.